Dr. Mel Richardson, who is the exotic wildlife veterinarian uh, for Animal Defenders International. The, the 40 years I've worked with captive animals, the first 10 of those was as a caretaker, zookeeper, uh, research technician, and then I decided I wanted to be a veterinarian and, and work with them and improve their life. Uh, and that's what I did the next 30 years. Seeing these animals now in relative freedom for captivity, uh, as close as they can get uh, here, um, seeing them run and play, seeing them being lions, um, it, it makes me proud. It makes me proud because we did that. You know, I was a part of this team that did that. that, that that's a, my proudest moment. Let me put this perspective, which always helps me to explain why it is so bad to keep lions and tigers and elephants in the facilities they keep them in, in traveling shows. Imagine living all of your life on a queen size or king size bed. That's the space we're talking about. That's the space that's written into the regulations that they are allowed to do. Succeeded. We, we moved 25 lions from the worst condition you can be in for a, a, a captive wild animal in a circus, uh, living a total life of hell um, in their own feces, uh, no place to run, no place to exercise, no choices of their own. And we moved them into a situation, as we see here today, where we have them, where they have choices. There is no way you can provide the, the, the physical, psychological, social, well-being of any wild animal in a traveling situation. You cannot do it. I've treated the abuse that's occurred uh, from uh, chains, from, uh, from hooks. I've treated uh, uh, the feet when they're standing chained so they can't get away from their own urine, elephants. And, uh, and I've treated the cats that are breaking their teeth off on the bars because they're chewing at the bars. What motivates me now it was all the 42 years that I didn't do anything. And all the, the um, suffering that I've seen with captive wild animals. At least thanks to ADI and thanks to others, I, I have an opportunity to make amends. And that's what motivates me. I hope that if the American public actually knew how severe of a life these poor creatures live, uh, we would stop it. And, and this, this, this law, this bill, this thing we're trying to get through, this regulation, it is, is to stop the worst of the worst. Um, and I, I think that if we can get that much done this year, that would be such an advancement for us. I mean, other countries have done it. Bolivia's done it. Peru's done it. Uh, Austria's done it. So, I mean, there's no reason we can't do it. I can remember after this episode was over and I arrived back in, 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 at home and a couple of days later I woke up and, and I thought, hell, it's all over. We did it. We actually did it. <laughs> so once, it was a once in a lifetime opportunity. It's probably the proudest moment in my 42 years working with captive animals to be able to be involved in this.